Hey everyone, I won't start off with any definition or anything like that. Rather, I'm just asking you to check something on Google. Please search about Azure Data Engineer Jobs and then check the search volume. It's gonna be huge. In this interview season, K21 Academy wants you to ace your dream job by answering the most predictable interview questions with us. Our team has handpicked these questions from various surveys and candidate reviews. So, this video is going to cover the questions from basics to intermediate to advanced level around Azure Data Factory. So, watch this video at peace. Let's get started. Our first question is very basic and generic, which all of you should be knowing that why do we exactly need Azure Data Factory? Well, Azure Data Factory does not store any data itself. It rather allows you to create data-driven workflows to orchestrate the movement of data between supported data stores and processing of data using computing services in other regions or in an on-premise environment. It also allows you to monitor, manage workflows using both programmatic and UI mechanisms. Moving to our next question that says, what is Azure Data Factory? Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based data integration service that allows you to create data-driven workflows in the cloud or for orchestrating and automating data movements and data transformation. The Data Factory services allows you to create data pipelines that move and transform data and then run the pipelines on a specified schedule. Your schedule could be hourly, daily, or weekly. This means that it is consumed and produced by workflows and it is also time slice data and we can specify the pipeline mode as a scheduled. So it could be once a day or maybe one time a week. Moving to our third question that says what is integration runtime? To answer this, I'll just say integration runtime is a compute infrastructure that Azure Data Factory uses to provide some integration capabilities across various network environments. Now, I'll be discussing about three types of integration runtimes. First is Azure Integration Runtime that can copy data between cloud data stores and it can dispatch the activity to a variety of computing services such as Azure HD Insight or SQL Server where the transformation takes place. Second, we have Self-Hosted Integration Runtime. So, it is a software with essentially the same code as Azure Integration Runtime, but you install it on an on-premise machine or a virtual machine in the virtual network. And third is Azure SSIS Integration Runtime. With SSIS Integration Runtime, you can natively execute SSIS packages in a managed environment. So, when we lift and shift the SSIS packages to Data Factory, we use Azure SSIS integration runtime. Moving to our fourth question that says what is the limit on the number of integration runtimes? So to answer this, uh, there's no hard limit on the number of integration runtime instances you can have in a data factory. There is however a limit on the number of VM cores that the integration runtime can use that too per subscription for SSIS packages on execution. Moving to our fifth question that says what is the difference between Azure Data Lake and Azure Data Warehouse? To answer this, data warehouses is a traditional way of storing data which is still used widely. Alongside, data lake is a complement to the data warehouse. That is, if you have a data and a data lake that can be stored in data warehouse as well as, but there are certain rules that need to be followed. In data lake, the data is detailed data or raw data. It can be in any particular form. Whereas in data warehousing, the data is filtered. It is more schematic. It is more structured. Talking about data lake, there is only one language to process the data. Whereas in data warehousing, we have SQL. Moving to our sixth question that says, what is blob storage in Azure? Blob storage is a service for storing large amount of unstructured object data such as text or binary data. You can use blob storage to expose data publicly to the world or maybe to a store or application you are in a data privacy. Common uses of blob storage includes storing files for distributed access, 
maybe streaming audio and video, or it could be storing data for backup and restoring disaster recovery and archiving. Also, storing data for analysis by an on-premise or Azure host service. Moving to our seventh question that says, what is the difference between lake storage and blob storage? I'll start with some key concepts. For Azure Data Lake storage, there could be data log storage generation one accounting folders, which in turn contains data stored as files. Whereas in Azure Blob Storage, the storage account has containers, which in turn has data in the form of small, small blobs. Talking about the use cases, for data lake storage, we have batch, interactive, streaming analytics, and machine learning data such as log files, IoT data, click streams, big, big data sets. But talking about Azure Blob Storage, any type of text or binary data would work. Moving to our eighth question, that says, what are the steps for creating ETL process in Azure Data Factory? While we are trying to extract some data from Azure SQL Server databases, if something has to be processed, then it will be processed and stored in the data lake store. In order to create the ETL, we have some steps that can be followed. First is you have to create a link service for data source. Next, you can assume that we have uh, a cars data set. So let's see that what we have to do next. You can create a link service for destination data store in which Azure Data Lake is stored. After that, you can create a data set for data saving. Then maybe you can create a pipeline and after that you can schedule the pipeline by adding a trigger. Moving to a ninth question that says what are the difference between HD Insights and Azure Data Lake Analytics. The first difference we can easily feel that HD Insight is a platform as a service that is PAS and Azure Data Lake Analytics is a software as a service. For example, if we want to process a data set in HD Insights, then first of all, we have to configure the cluster with predefined nodes. And talking about Azure Data Lake Analytics, it is all about passing query, then writing the process for data, and then taking it to the computing nodes. Also, talking about HD Insights Pass. Also, talking about HD Insights, we can configure the clusters with HD Insights if we can create and we can also control it as well. Talking about Azure Data Lake Analytics, it does not give us a much flexibility time in terms of provisioning the cluster. But Azure, it takes care of it. We need not to worry about the cluster creation. It automatically does that. Moving to our 10th question that says, what are the top level concepts of Azure Data Factory? To start with this, it's a very basic question. Although it has been asked by some of the master recruiters, we have four basic concepts, or I should say the four top level concepts that we'll be seeing. First is pipeline. It acts as a career in which we have various processes taking place. Next is activities. Activities represents the processing steps in the pipeline. Next, we have data sets, that is the store of the data. In simple words, it is a data structure that holds our data. And last, we have link services, that is these services store information that is very important when it comes to connecting an external resource. For example, consider a SQL server. You need a connecting string that you can connect to an external device you need to mention the source and the destination of your data. So, moving to our 11th question that says, how can we schedule a pipeline? You can use a schedule trigger or time window trigger to schedule a pipeline. The trigger uses a wall clock calendar schedule, which can schedule pipelines periodically or in a calendar-based recurrent pattern. For example, on Mondays at 6 p.m. and it could be Thursdays at 9 p.m. Moving to our next question that asks that, whether I can pass a parameter to a pipeline run. So to answer this, yes, parameters are the first class top level concept in Data Factory. You can define parameters at pipeline level and then maybe you can pass arguments to execute the pipeline. Moving to our next question that says, how do we access data by using other AT data set types in the Data Factory? Well, to answer this, the mapping data flow feature currently allows Azure SQL database Azure SQL Data Warehouse, delimited text files from Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Storage to Generation 2 and parquet files from Blob Storage or Data Lake Storage Generation 2 natively for source and sync. You can use copy activity 
to state's data from any of the other connectors and then you can execute a data flow activity to transform data and after it's been staged for example your pipeline will first copy into block storage and then a data flow activity will use a data set in the source to transform that particular data now moving to our 14th question that says explain the two level of security in ADLS generation 2 also this question was asked by amazon to answer this the two levels of security applicable to ADLS Generation 2 were also in effect for ADLS Generation 1. Even though this is not new, it is worth calling out that the two level of security because it's a very fundamental piece of getting started with data lake and it is confusing for many people who are just getting started. First is role-based access control, that is RBSE. It includes built-in Azure roles such as reader, contributor, owner or customer roles. Typically, RBAC is assigned for two reasons. First is to specify who can manage the service itself. And the second reason is to permit the use of built-in data explorer tools. Next, we have access control list, that is ACLS. Access control list specify exactly which data objects is user may read or write or execute. ACLS are POSIX compliant, thus familiar to those who use Linux or Unix background. Moving to our 50th question that says what has changed from private preview limited to public preview in regard to data flows. This is a recent update which you'll check and to answer this we have very briefly formulated it for you. First is you'll no longer see that you have to bring your own data Azure bricks. Rather, Azure Data Factory will manage cluster creations and the data process. Also, you can still use Data Lake Storage Generation 2 and Blob Storage to store those files. You can use the appropriate link services for those of the storage engines. And the Blob Dataset and Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2 datasets are separated into two delimited text and Apache Parquet datasets. Moving to our next question that says, what is the difference between data set and link service in data factory? Link service is a description of the connection string that is used to connect the data stores. For example, when ingesting data from a SQL Server instance, the link service contains the name for the SQL Server instance and the credentials used to connect to that particular instance. Whereas, data set is a reference to the data store that is described by the link service. When ingesting data from a SQL Server instance, the dataset points to the name of the table that contains the target or the query that returns the data from different tables. Our next question is, what is the difference between the mapping data flow and wrangling data flow transformation? Mapping data flow activity is the visually designed data transformation activity that allows us to design a graphical data transformation logic without the need to be an expert developer and executed as an activity within the ADF pipeline on an ADF fully managed scale output Spark cluster. Whereas, data wrangling flow activity is a code-free data preparation activity that integrates with Power Query Online in order to make the Power Query M functions available for the data wrangling using Spark execution. Moving to our next question that says, Data Factory supports two types of computing environments to execute the transformation activities. We need to mention that. Well, there are two types. First is on-demand compute environment, that is using a computing environment fully managed by the ADF. In this computing type, the cluster will be created to execute the transformation activity and removed automatically when the activity is completed. The next one is bring your own environment in which the used compute environment is managed by you and the ADF. Our next question is, what is Azure SSIS integration runtime? It is a fully managed cluster of virtual machines hosted in Azure and dedicated to run SSIS packages in the data factory. The SSIR nodes can be scaled up by configuring the node size or scaled out by configuring the number of nodes in the VM clusters. Our next question is, what is required to execute an SSIS package in Data Factory? We need to create an SS 
ISIR and SSIS DB catalog hosted in Azure SQL database or Azure SQL Managed Instance. So this is a very basic question and it's very random. Moving to our next question that says, any data factory pipeline can be executed using three methods. Mention these methods. So to answer this, we have three different methods. First is under debug mode. Then we have manual execution using trigger now. And the third one is using an added schedule, tumbling window or an event trigger. Moving to our second question that says, it's a very situational question. So it says that if we need to copy data from an on-premise SQL server instance using Data Factory, which integration runtime should be used and where it should be installed? To answer this, we can just say that self-hosted integration runtime should be installed on the on-premise machine where the SQL server instance is hosted. Our next question in the list is what is Azure Table Storage? Azure Table Storage is a service used across many projects which helps us to store structured data in the cloud and also provides a key store with a schema's design. It is fast, it is cost effective for many applications. Our next question is, can we monitor and manage Azure Data Factory pipelines? So yes, we can and these are some steps. We need to click on monitor and manage the Data Factory tab. Secondly, we have to click on Resource Explorer. There, we'll find pipelines, data sets, link services in a tree format. Moving to our last question that says, what are the steps involved in the ETL process? To answer this, we have different kind of four steps. It, it is connection and collection. After that, we have transformation. And after transforming that particular data, we can publish it. And then we have different monitoring steps that help in supporting the pipeline via Azure Monitor, API, Partial, Log Analytics, and Help Panels on the Azure board. You all must be intrigued by the kind of questions we have just set out for you. In order to learn these skill sets, you can book your seat for a free class right now. You can log on to k21academy.com forward slash dp20302. All right, everyone. So I'll just quickly show you how you can do that. So just click on your browser and type k21academy.com forward slash dp20302. And then you'll be seeing this page. Just click on register now. So just uh, let me select Thursday and I'll add my name. You can add your email and then add your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. After that, I'll be seeing this page on the right hand side. You'll be seeing a URL. So you can save that URL in your calendars or with you. Keep it in your notes. And on the left hand side, we'll be giving you if you attend our free class till the end, then you'll be having this bonus. So till then, I'll see you in the class. Keep hustling and take care.